What is going on guys? Welcome to your ninth Java game development tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to be learning how to build some more methods that are going to be useful in our animation. So in the last story, we built a method to add a scene, and we also built our constructor. And inside our constructor, we called the start method, but we never actually built it. So let's go ahead and add a comment, to, uh, and we'll build it right now. What this is going to do is start animation from beginning. Uh, good enough. Make sure beginning looks like Beijing or else your code will not work. So let's go ahead and make our start method right here. And we'll go public and synchronize void start. So now we can only run this method um, before we can run any other, aka synchronized. So what start is going to do is remember we made two variables called movie time and total time right here. It's going to pretty much, you're going to call this whenever you restart your animation or start it for the first time. So we're going to set that movie time or your animation time equal to zero right there. So aside from this, whenever you restart your animation, you want to make sure that your scene index is at zero as well. And this means that pretty much you start at the beginning of your animation. And whenever you call this method, and make sure that everything is pretty much reset to zero. So that's all that method does start simple enough and now we need to make a method to change from scene to scene or when one image is up go to the next scene so let's go ahead and go ahead and put change scenes good enough and now we'll name this method update so public synchronized void and we'll name it update now what this is going to do is take one parameter, um, long time passed, and what time passed is going to be, and don't worry about the um, uh, exactly what it means right now, we'll be creating it later, it's pretty much going to be the time that passes from the last update. Since we're going to call this update many, many times, and we're going to keep track of the time that passed from when I called it this time, from the time I called it last time. So let's go ahead and write a simple if if scenes dot size and size is built in method so you don't got to worry about that is greater than one and if you're saying all right why do you need to check this well if you only have one scene that's then your scene is equal to one then you don't even have an animation you just have a picture just chilling there on your screen so we only run to run this code if there's more than one pictures pretty much. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. The first thing we want to do is take that movie time and set it equal to the sum of time passed. And what does this mean in plain terms? Well, the movie time is pretty much the sum of all the time that passed from last update. So this time passed is how long does it take to call these updates from the last update? and store that time and add it to this movie time right here. So it's pretty much a sum of all the time passed. So pretty much what you're gonna get in the movie time is the total time your animation has run. So now what we can do that uh, is check for something. If movie time is greater or equal to total time like that, and why do we need to check for this? Because we want to make sure the time of the animation itself does not exceed the limit that it should go. And if it does exceed it, if this animation gets done sooner than this, we want to restart the animation. And if we don't restart it, then it's just going to stay still on that last picture. And we don't want that or else it would be a really boring movie. So let's just go ahead and what do we want to do to restart our animation? Uh, let's go ahead and put movie time equal to zero and also scene index equal to zero and if you look up here this is pretty much doing the same thing this this is gonna happen when you start your animation for the very first time and when it's running and you need to restart it this is how you do it so and that is needs to be capitalized like that so pretty much when the movie gets done or when the animation gets done running one loop restart the animation again 
and do it until it gets to the total time, then your movie's going to be over. So, now we need, need to make a little thing. If the movie time surpasses, well, pretty much is saying, when do I go, when do I get done with one picture and go to the other picture? And let's let, make a little while loop for this. It'll be the easier. If movie time, and remember, this is your animation time, is greater than, and this might be kind of confusing, um, we're going to be building a method later called get scene, and it's pretty much going to get the picture or the scene you're on. So get scene, and I know we didn't build this yet, but stick with me. Scene index, and this all this is going to do is get whatever animation you're on right now, and get the end time for it. So, well, let me think. All right, here we're going to do scene index plus plus. What this is saying, and I know it's confusing because we didn't build this method yet, and we're going to be building it in the next tutorial. When you get to the end of one scene, go to the next one. So, whenever you call a picture, it's going to run for a certain amount of time. Whenever you're done running that, go to the next picture and do the exact same thing before. So, that's what this little while loop checks for. And now, our update method is complete. All we have to do is pass in the time that passed, and we'll be checking this in our other one right here. Um, I mean, that's that's all we really need for this tutorial. So I know this looks really confusing, but if you just look at it for like one second and think about it, all it does pretty much is change scenes when it needs to be changed, or change pictures, change images. They're all the same thing. So, thank you for watching this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to be building probably, well, a couple more methods that are going to be necessary. And soon enough, we'll have this animation up and running in no time. But, again, like I said, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.